How many colors do you think you have uh, choices on on trucks? Ooh, I don't know, maybe similar, like seven, ten? Hundreds. Hundreds. Hey everyone, welcome to another of our SCS on the road episodes. Today we are in uh, North Carolina, in Greensboro at Volvo Trucks North America headquarters. And I'm here with this amazing gentleman. Uh, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, my name is Jason Spence and uh, I've worked with Volvo for 25 years now. Okay. I had the awesome responsibility of helping introduce this new VNL that we're gonna talk about today. And, uh, and I've presently work in the strategy part of the organization where we talk about the next generation of trucks. Okay. Can you tell us more about what do we have here? Absolutely. So this is, this is our core product for Volvo trucks. This is the Volvo VNL. It is designed uh, to, for a long haul transport. Uh -huh. uh, all across the US, it is loved by our customer base. Um, this truck is known for uh, the ride and, and quality. It is a driver's okay. truck. Okay. And, um, and our drivers uh, often comment about how easy it is to operate this mm -hmm. truck and, and really how they love driving, the visibility, the safety, and uh, talking about this exact track, what uh, can you tell us more about this spec here? Yes, so this is the VNL 860. 860 okay. uh, the 860 is our largest sleeper. It has a high roof. It is a 77 inch sleeper. It's got a good size bunk. Okay. It's got mo the most storage of any Volvo and almost any truck in the mm -hmm. market. Uh, so when it comes to uh, room, and a space to live on the road, this truck has it all. It has what the drivers need. And, uh, and it's aerodynamic, it's uh -huh. fuel efficient. It, uh, it gets the job done, but not only just gets the job done, it gets it done in style. I have one question here. I'm, I, I'm looking at this uh, Exceed. Like, can you tell us more about what does it mean? Like Exceed is, uh, in this case, it is a package that makes the truck it is the combination of the powertrain, the aerodynamics that makes this one of the most fuel efficient trucks okay. you can buy. And so it is the transmission programming. Mm -hmm. It's what we call down speeding where, mm -hmm. you know, you're heading down the road. Mm -hmm. If you're going down the hill, the truck basically, you know, shifts in the neutral, okay. so to speak. It's like cruising. Like it cruises, okay. the engine RPMs go uh -huh. down to idle and you're not burning that fuel. And so that's part of the Exceed cool. package and that's it's saving cool. you money uh, when you do that. Uh, it also, when I talked about aerodynamics, we talked about the way that truck is designed. You'll see if you, it's a wedge shaped, yeah. right? Yeah, and to, so we're- To we're make the, the, the air flow, right? Nicely. Yeah, we're splitting that air. Where well, you gotta have air that goes through the radiator to cool, to cool the yeah. engine, right? Yeah. But the rest of the air you want smoothly uh -huh. going around uh -huh. the truck. You want it going under the truck, you can see underneath, Yep. Uh, the bumper is we're guiding that air uh, all the way down under the truck. Oh yeah. It's going under the rear axle yeah. all the way under. So you don't want a bunch of turbulent airflow uh -huh. because that's what takes away from your efficiency. So we want to cover up as much as possible to guide the air, uh -huh. uh, but then we want to make it usable as well. One of the key components to trucks is tow eyes. Uh -huh. So for example, if you're if you're pulled off on the side of the road and you get in ice and the mm -hmm. truck needs to be towed mm -hmm. out where do you connect you don't crawl under to get to the axle you got to get to a tow eye so this is actually a cover oh, that really? can be pulled off and uh and expose the tow eye itself on both sides on both sides so you pull it from oh, the yeah. outside here it goes off very now. Yeah. So this is aerodynamics. It covers it, but the actual tow eye receivers in here, so you can pull okay. them out of the luggage compartment and plug them in, and you know, and tow the truck out. 
uh, in, you know, if it's stuck or, uh -huh. you know, a situation like that. Same thing with safety systems. So you'll notice that in the windshield, there's a camera. Oh yeah. There's a sensor. There's a, radar, a sensor yeah. down right yeah. here. So uh, for, you know, there's traffic out there. The driver's in control of their vehicle, uh -huh. but the driver can't, they can't control what the car does oh, in yeah. front of them, right? Yeah. Or the other truck in front of them. And so we have safety systems to help the driver. Like There's a lot of assistance. Emergency braking and then something like that, right? That's exactly yeah. what the radar and the camera are doing. Uh -huh. They're constantly scanning the road in front. They're looking for the vehicles, the time gap spacing between. And so if a vehicle slams on brakes in front of you, this truck is gonna alert the driver uh -huh. first. So the driver has the chance to respond but let's say the driver just doesn't respond fast enough. The truck will stop on its own. The truck will start to slow down. And then if necessary, it's gonna start braking on its own to prevent the potential of a collision. That's great. So there's a lot of really advanced safety systems in these trucks to help the drivers uh, should they need that. You've been talking about how this truck evolved through the years. Like, can you point out a few things that are maybe new from the previous models or something like that? Sure. Uh, one of the things that has evolved over the years with technology is LEDs, mm -hmm. right? They've enabled us to make everything smaller uh, as far as the space used to package things. Mm -hmm. And so all of our lighting on these trucks are LEDs now and uh, from the headlamps, but LEDs are different from incandescent bulbs mm -hmm. in the technology. Mm -hmm. They handle vibration a lot yeah. better, uh, so they don't have to be replaced as often. But the other thing is they don't produce the same amount of heat yeah. in the same way. Yeah. They still produce heat, but I'm maybe not, not much, enough yeah. heat to, to melt ice, oh, yeah? for example. Okay. So in these lamps, now we have fans that take the heat that they do produce and blow heat up onto the inside of the uh, really? the cover so that the light or the the light still you know shines yeah, through yeah. unobstructed by yeah. ice um, but also in the hot summer months there's oh, a fan cool that style? helps to cool oh, it okay. so the fan literally reverses that is um, cool. based on whether it needs to cool or heat the surface is of it the lamp. automatic automatic or it the driver is. can turn it on and off or? it's all automatic oh, okay another is the visibility these mirrors on the hoods, I mean, it's an option, mm -hmm. but this really helps for visibility. We have more traffic now than you've ever had. Yeah. And, uh, and drivers really need to be able to see what's in, in their blind spots. And these really reduce And it's quite easy spots. to get into a blind spot of a truck, right? Well, you don't have to spec a truck when you build it mm -hmm. with hood mounted mirrors. But Man, it helps. they're so useful. Yeah. They're absolutely useful. This, this whole piece right here is designed for airflow uh -huh. to guide the air from the windshield around the truck. Uh, not that it just hits, but it's it's really shaping the airflow around the truck. And uh, you're gonna have airflow, how do you manage it? Uh -huh. And it's all about managing the aerodynamics. So you guys spent a lot of time in wind tunnel and uh, checking if everything, if the air flows around your trucks yes. the way you, want yeah. to, you would like it to do. But you said wind tunnel. Uh, wind tunnel is important. Uh? And there are certain things you can learn, but we talk about technology and what's changed over the years. Mm -hmm. We spend less time in wind tunnels and more time doing computer simulations. Okay. So for many years, we would take these trucks and we'd put them in wind tunnels or we'd make them scale models mm -hmm. and put them in mm -hmm. wind tunnels. And uh, that gives you, you know, a good idea, yeah. but computer simulations yeah, have been more advanced. precise information right yeah, coming so, from that yeah. yeah there was a there was a period of time where our computers we would match the computer okay. simulation with the wind tunnel data and as it turns out it's expensive where where are you going to find a wind tunnel to put a truck this size in? <laughs> not, not many of them yeah <laughs> there's not many of them and they're very expensive yeah. to use and so it's less expensive to get a really nice functioning computer True. True. and put this and simulate it. Uh, and so that's what we do more of now. We simulate mm -hmm. wind flow, we simulate aerodynamics in the computer, and we know that the computer simulation matches the wind yeah. tunnel. So we've effectively stopped doing wind tunnel testing. This is smooth, 
uh -huh. you don't see the fuel, yeah. you yeah. don't see the def tank, but just to open the chassis fairings in this oh, case. Oh, okay. Um, we get a lot of pollen in North Carolina, so you'll see a lot of pollen dust, but you can inspect the batteries. Uh -huh. You can inspect from under the truck. And, uh, and even if you, you know, if you need to do service, uh, you don't have to crawl under the truck yeah. underneath these Just low aerodynamics. Yeah. And this is designed to pull off um, fairly easily uh -huh. without tools. Uh -huh. Uh, so that if you need to service the truck, you can pull these parts off. This is all about fuel economy and aerodynamics and making sure that this truck is uh, awesome. as smooth as possible running down the road, right? When when I first started working in the truck industry, I mean, I'm used to automotives, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go buy a car, you might, you might have seven to 10 mm -hmm. choices or mm -hmm. something like yeah. that for color, yeah. right? Yeah. So, how many colors do you think you have uh, choices on on trucks? Ooh, I don't know, maybe similar, like seven, ten? Hundreds. Hundreds? Hundreds. Now we've had to limit it over the years, but okay. when I first started, I mean, it was, it was, you probably could get close to a thousand different okay. options so for colors. So basically anything customer comes with, you guys are able to. So if you're, if you have a business and your business has that's all the trucks true. running a certain color, maybe yeah, it's a true. UPS or, brown. Or stripes or something. So we sell trucks to businesses as well as individual customers. And they say, I want, you know, my business color is orange or uh -huh. this red. Uh -huh we need to make sure we paint the trucks their color. And so when you take all the possible customers for businesses and, and individuals, we could, we could narrow down the individual colors to a hundred. Yeah, yeah. And then this truck is our Globetrotter. Globetrotter started in, with the Volvo brand in 79, 1979. I mean, it goes back a little ways, right? Um, and in Europe, as you probably know, it was, every country had their own currency mm -hmm. it was before the euro mm -hmm. it was before the eu mm -hmm. and and it was it was a challenge let's say you're in a day cab yeah and you don't have a sleeper yeah. and you have to stop and you have how many different currencies of money do you have to have to every you know, state to go means different currency right and so these drivers it was a big challenge so they're driving a truck they have to stop and, and they have to carry all different currencies mm -hmm. and really plan out their trips. And so Volvo developed the Globetrotter. They created a high roof sleeper with enough room and storage for luggage and it enabled drivers to not have to stop and pay for you know, a hostel oh, room or a you know, yeah. room overnight yeah. Yeah. in Europe. And so the idea is that you have the best of the best on the road. The Volvo brand is, you know, it's an American brand now. We've been here for over 25 yeah. years uh, and it's just adding a little bit of heritage mm -hmm. to these North American products uh, that are on the road. And, and these are much bigger than the original Globetrotter. These are much better it's than the massive, original it's trucks, right? Truck. It's a massive truck. Can we maybe take a look inside as yeah, well? Let's yeah, let's do it. A number of years ago, Volvo actually pioneered internal grab handles. It was that the grab handles were always on the outside. Mm -hmm. And so you saw how dirty the truck gets oh, on the yeah. outside, right? Oh, yeah. Just with pollen. Imagine driving in the snow and ice and you just have buildup. Why would you want to have slippery grab handles on the outside of the truck when you're trying to climb in and out? So when we put them on the inside, you keep them clean. They're always dry. They're always safe to grab and, uh, and you can easily climb in and out. And I believe like a lot of the truck drivers love to keep their second home clean, right? They, a lot of them even like switch their shoes before entering yeah, the cabin, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you'll notice that, um, oh, yeah, and you can spec this. We actually, we have carpet up front. You have carpet in the rear. So I, you can you can put rubber floor mats mm -hmm. up front and have the carpet in the rear as well. And we also have the luggage exterior luggage compartment. So you know you could take your boots and still put yep. them in a the luggage compartment and not even have to have them in here anywhere. I love how big it is. It looks like RV. It, it is looks like RV. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. And and so uh, the sleeper itself gives you you have an upper bunk and this lower bunk area is called a dinette. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a workstation. 
Uh, so this one's really configurable. Uh, you can sleep on the upper bunk. Yep. You could leave the lower as is. The upper folds up, give you more headroom if you want. And the lower, you can uh, you can drop the table. It's like an RV, literally, yeah. as you said it, right? You can drop the table, move the cushions, and that can be your bed. So this truck could be set up for an owner operator. Mm -hmm. It could be a, a, a pair of drivers. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a lot of husband wife couples mm -hmm. that own their trucks and this is their travel home. Together, yeah, yeah this looking. is their dream was to travel in a yeah. truck and this is what they do. They buy one of these and, uh, and uh, typically they're, they have it all organized and um, they're very they keep proud. keep it clean. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of our customers like to show others, you know, here's an idea of how to use the oh, space. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that we uh, we have is a battery powered parking heater and parking cooler. So you don't have to run the engine mm -hmm. uh, when you're parked. You can run the air conditioning uh, when the engine's off. Uh, and a lot of customers also spec their own generator that oh, yeah. they mount on the frame yeah. to do the same thing. Can I take well, a look? Yeah, take a look all around. It gives you plenty of room up there. There's actually a ladder right here that you can use to pull down to get up there. So you don't have to just jump up okay. to get up there. I, I just wonder where it is. The, the ladder. Uh -huh. it's, see, it's hidden away. Yeah. Yeah, so it's easy to store, but it's right here. And so oh, that's. Yep. So this ladder right here folds down. Oh, OK, that is cool. And uh, it sits down in this area right here. So now you have the ability to climb on up and uh, and use the upper bunk. Plenty of room. And you are a quite tall guy. So I'm six foot <laughs> yeah. two. And uh, and I have I probably have another three inches yeah. um, easily. I'm laying straight across the bunk. I have plenty of room. You talked about storage, right? So we have yep. storage cubbies in these areas, but on the back of the cabinets up here. This is reachable from the oh, back okay. and I can store on both sides. And you can also and get yep. to it. So there's a handle oh. here. This is for a flat screen TV. Yep. yep. So you can, uh, you could actually use the TV, put the TV out here and oh, rotate the TV okay. out and you have storage behind it. For maybe some Xbox, PlayStation. So I mentioned the upper bunk can be rotated upward. Uh huh. So you, then you have even Not more good. space to stand straight. Yeah. Like, so this yeah. gives you space because obviously you might need to change clothes. I'm not demonstrating that. <laughs> uh, but this is, you know, this gives you more yeah, room yeah. to move yeah. around. Um, the lower cabinets are kind of the and same the way. The so high. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm 6'2", right? You can't even reach it. Yeah. I, I mean, I have to walk all the way up uh -huh. almost to the very front by the seats to even touch the ceiling. So it gives you lots of room. The uh, dinette set. I mentioned can uh, can rotate down, and you have a and then second these, bunk. Yep, yeah. So these will rotate down. You, you will pull put these it out. beneath the mattress, right? Yes, yeah. these these become a mat the mattress for the lower area. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And there is even a cubby behind uh, the seat for kind of more hidden storage. Okay. You don't have to sleep in a bunk, or you don't have to always sit in a bunk back yeah. here. You have this is why we call this a workstation. Yeah. Because okay. you can do other things. Because of the rules mm -hmm. and the hours of service rules, if you're parked, if you're off the clock, you have to be in the sleeper. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have so many hours in the sleeper to reset in order to be able to, yep. to have hours to drive. So we want to make this environment comfortable. So the, the steering wheel itself and the seat, everything is adjustable. We're, we're all shapes and sizes, yep. right? And yeah. so you need to make a truck, if you're tasked with making a truck, how do you make it comfortable for everybody? And so you got to make that seat adjustable in every way possible, the, the wheel, steering wheel. Yeah. And so there's a pedal over on the left-hand side that you can put a little small pedal. And if you push it down. This one? Yes. Push that down. This The steering wheel will go up and oh, down. Oh, okay. And it'll also go tilt and telescope for you. Oh yeah. But if you pull that pedal back up about halfway, now the end of it rotates and that's called a neck tilt. So that's you, cool. you have three different ways of adjusting uh, the steering wheel. I can tell that you guys are probably 
keeping a lot of things in your head when you are designing a truck, both exterior and interior, right? So this is really cool. Uh, I've never been thinking about these details or parts of the truck, both exterior and interior, the way how am I thinking about them now, thanks to all your information. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, for, for absolutely. The, thanks for, for being here, man. For the walk around, for, for all the information, I believe, for the community. It's going to be great to, to hear that, to watch this. And uh, we will see you at the next episode.